today and just looks good today. Yeah, it's a great day. I, I walked in here and had uh, somebody uh, dropped off uh, some pizza and some wings and Oh, ah, there you go. It was real good. There might not. Uh, is there any left back here? But, uh, hey, but God is, though. He's good. The heat, you know, uh, yesterday and today was uh, warm. But uh, there, there's uh, states out there that it's uh, hitting 100, 115. Yeah, uh, yeah. it, it's amazing, man. I don't have... I don't know how the electric stays on in them cities, and I don't know how the air conditioners uh, do it. I really don't. And with that building that collapsed, that, that half a building, they're still taking their time out of respect for the kids. Um, you know, anybody that did survive, that, that was a miracle in itself. To see tons and tons of concrete like that, and they really do tick through. I'm talking little pans and stuff and pass it on. And, but, uh, you know, I know they're going to find parts. It's awful to say that. But, but like I said, uh, we, all, we, we all take life for granted. Uh, when you go on a vacation, you don't even think about the buildings. You stay in hotels and all this stuff. But, um. Uh, yeah, but weren't they told about that about a month ago that something Yeah, by inspectors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going. Yeah. There's cracks in the wall. There'll yeah. be a yeah. lot of lawsuits there, oh, but yeah. nothing, nothing brings anybody back. Now you can imagine not finding it. Well, they didn't fix it in 2018. When they checked yeah. it over, it was supposed to be fixed, and they didn't fix it. And the rest of that other building, I hope they tear that down. They're making it sound like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. I, I told her when they first sat and I said, I could picture them trying to just put a wall up, you know, and keep on going with that other side. Yeah, it's and it's on. amazing. People would, hey, people will flock to get there now. It'll be, uh, they'll be charging. It's, yeah. it's crazy, yeah. man. Hey, uh, what else is going on? Go ahead. I just want to praise God for like, different opportunities. I had an opportunity to uh, do that spin cycle class with um, people who saw it um, advertised somewhere. And um, I'm just glad I survived because I, I didn't think I would not going to die at first. But it was so much fun. And then spinning off of her testimony, a lady there saw, she asked us what church we go to. And I told her that this crazy worship and we were singing and, you know, saying mm -hmm. stuff. And um, she was like, yeah, I see your window. Doesn't your window say everybody's welcome? She's yes. like, that is so inviting. She's like mm -hmm. asking when our services are and stuff. She goes to a church in Brownsville. She said, but she wanted, could she visit? I said, yeah, you can visit whenever you want. She said, well, I'm not looking for a church. I said, you don't need to be looking for a church. To yeah, that, that yeah. blows them away, too, right. when you don't but try to drag them amazing. in the door. Yeah. Yeah, so um, really come and nice. visit. If they like it, stop in. So all three of us, we, we survived right away, too. Yeah. Amen. At least. Just praise God for a lot of opportunities to speak about the Lord and, and things to people that you would never expect to be able to do that with certain people. And opportunities have just been arising left and right. So it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. I was really surprised yesterday, too. All the people that were complaining about the heat, all I could think of is, boy, you people are going to be in big trouble if you think this is hot. You better yeah. be thinking about the Lord above. That's your be a lot I'm saying it's summertime. For eternity. Yeah. You know, I you mean, can't. It's just yeah. too much that we complain about the snow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I've said, though. I mean, <clears throat> the weather affects church attendance mm -hmm. in the winter, spring, summer, and fall. It does. Well, rain. There's times people just, they're not going to get their self wet. I, I don't understand, but, but like I said, uh, it's summertime. I mean, hey, if it was uh, the second of November and and it was in the high nineties, then I'd say we got some problems. They they always want to try to drag this into well, there you go again, yo, know, them glaciers, you know, the ice things are melting and and the weather's changed. It's like 
I've been around 63 years and we pretty much saw snow in the winter, heat in the summer, yeah. <laughs> uh, rain in April and May. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So, <clears throat> But like I said, uh, um, you adapt. I'd rather live where we experience all four seasons. I know people that up and move to Florida and then turn around and move back a couple months, what, six months later? Move back. So it's a nice place to visit. I don't want to live there. That's all. Amen. Go ahead. Um, I had, Sapphire had a, uh, an audiology appointment today to get her ears checked. <laughs> and uh, I just want to praise God that there was no change because any change would be a worse change. There could not be a change for the better. So, and they're also going to upgrade her hearing aids and they're going to give her some Bluetooth so it can connect to her iPad. So, oh, that's nice. yeah, I thought that was a nice cool. um, opportunity because back then when she got it, it wasn't, you know, they didn't do the Bluetooth thing. So, yeah. they're going to put that cool. in there for her. Yeah, but watching with little kids, I mean real young, real young kids that they put devices on that cause them to hear for the very first yes. time, it'll make you ball. The families cry, the kids, the only man you can't imagine. Hear their mom's voice for the first time. And I'll tell you this again, when you're hard hearing, uh, who was it you said that had expensive hearing aids? Cherry's father-in-law. Yeah. Uh, $7,000 and hearing aids and he can't hear with them they told me that everyone's different like I'm hard hearing but my problem isn't with, with just the, like your volume it's to do with the nerves in here uh, I don't know how to explain it you know what I mean they give you a print read out and there's some some sounds I can hear immediately. There's other sounds that's like, uh, I'm deaf. So that's, that's why I said, you know, I thought, well, maybe if I could get some expensive ones, but I doubt it. I don't even think that would help. So, okay, hey, who else? We got uh, Billy and his family and Crystal and Sarah and the kids and their daughter turned six years old. Sarah's here. Huh? Sarah's here. Sarah's here. Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> I called it Nancy. Oh, right I was away. like, wait a minute. I'm like, I don't know. It's okay. Yeah, we're <laughs> it's okay. James used to be Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Harry. I'm Harry. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the service, we will we'll lay hands on you and pray. Yes, Olivia. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Julia got discharged home today. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, good. Oh, good. That's nothing but. That's nothing but a miracle. God, I'm telling you. Hey, there was another on the, the news today. A, a, a guy that lost his wife, and he had three young kids and then a six week, I think, old baby uh, lost her to that COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's people still getting that. And uh, then they're saying that they think there might be some other type of COVID or something. All right. Hey, we're going to get started tonight with some music. And uh, I'm glad that you all came out. And I hope that you will help to praise the Lord. I, I, if, if there was three of you up there, I, I bet you you were singing louder than the other ones riding the bikes. We was pretty loud. Yeah, we were. Pretty loud. But that's the only thing that was like focused. Right. Not and not, uh, now I don't have the biking. Hey, they loved us. Yeah. They gave us some. They gave us free classes. You're not going yeah. up and sing with them? You sure did. Yeah. You that's coming here? Yeah. Up through the shorts. She and them were going on. It was nice. I don't know her guy who teaches. Right? He was getting it. He was. Because all you got to do is focus on getting through the 45 minutes. So I can run, but I don't do the biking thing. And you said that in six minutes or six minutes in my body. And I'm so tall. My feet was like this much higher than theirs. I'm like, are you sure this is nice? Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. 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 I'm sure
Are we ready? Is everybody ready? Yeah, we're all ready. Ready, ready, ready. That was weak. Yes. Let's try again. I knew James was tired when I saw him walking. I'm saying, pick it up, bro. Who says you have been here? What, as you pass the by? No, I was outside. No, I was outside. I was in the parking lot. He was right down there. Now, I literally think he's an angel or something because I've never seen him walking nowhere. Even when he leaves, he like disappears. I know, right? This dude is shady. This dude is shady. I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry.
he won. It's the weather too.
have put that that back in the garage today because of the rain coming. Right. But we will get it over there. Okay. Yeah. your hand wrapped up. I come in the door today and Olivia had a bandage all over her wrist. She's, you know, one. I just want to wrap a wool up. It's so cute though, I think. Are you guys coming? Come on. You don't oh, need yeah. They got snacks back there. There's some goodies back there, girlfriend. Who's back there? Come on, girl, don't be shy. Come on, you want to come? You want to come? You want to get a snack? Well, we'll be back there if you change your mind. <laughs> yeah, if you change your mind, you can go back and get a snack and come on back out. Heck, if you want to sing, I'll let you come up and sing tonight. You want to dance? Yeah. I'll dance with you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you will. Oh, 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 yeah, you I'm telling you, uh, Debbie, you're doing great. I'm telling you. I don't take those antidepressants anymore. It's all Jesus. Yeah, this is God. That's right. This is God. That's why I said when they told me in ICU you want a pastor, they act like I wasn't going to make it. I said no because I figured they weren't God. And I come out of there and that doctor said, I'm amazed you made it. And I just went like that. Yeah. Because it's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's short and sweet, man. That's right. We, we know who we believe in. And I'm telling you, man, God's got it all worked out. We're the ones that make it complicated. Amen. Right. Amen. Exactly. Talking about being complicated. I got my marker in here. But the Bible is on. Um, been very well used, yeah. let's say it that way. Well, that's a good thing. Oh, I'm telling you, I've had so many people offer to buy me a Bible. I said, no, man, I got Bibles. But a couple of them look like this one, but it's from using it, not throwing it around or kicking it. I really do use my word. I love the word. And when when you're being ministered to, I'm being ministered to. I really am. And I just try to really stay out of God's way. Uh, I pray that I never, ever see the day where I got to write a sermon out on paper, uh, like like you'd rehearse for an audition, because it's got to come by the Spirit of God, and He's good. He really is a good God. Amen. Turn over to Hebrews chapter ten, verse nineteen. Hebrew 10, 19. Why are you looking at me sitting there? I see you looking. Did you take a nap today? Yeah. Oh, God forbid if I fall asleep for 20 minutes in the chair. They make it sound like that's all I've done was sleep. <laughs> that's weird, though, you know? 
when you want to sleep, you can. Yeah. That's true. And you can watch TV and fall asleep. Hey, our pool man, in 24 hours, our pool literally turned green. I'm like, get out. Uh, so I went out. There really is a shortage on chemicals and stuff for pools. And uh, we ended up, I, I bought some other stuff that says it turns it from green to blue. And uh, so it is so turning back again. But whenever it gets that hot out, it's hard on us. It hey, this is Hebrew chapter 10, verse 19. Um, uh, James, say a prayer over the message tonight. Lord, please bless the Holy Word of God through your loving kindness, wisdom, and faith in your Holy Word. Amen. 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 Hey, um, yesterday, I, uh, before I started, I, I went to one store, and uh, the machine would not work, the, the uh, PNC card. <laughs> And uh, it was fine. And it's like, ah, oh, you know, I know our card was good. So I paid and we got out, you know, got on out of the store. Then we went to another store. They had the same problem. Then I ended up up here at the dollar store and had the same problem. The lady said, if the line got so long, the lady said, I'm sorry, she said, but uh, they just called and said that, uh, Take cash only. And uh, it felt good, though. Uh, there was a lot of people in the line, but I'm saying probably four of them behind me. Uh, you could see them getting frantic, like, you know, everybody pays for plastic. But listen, it felt good, man. Uh, I, I, was, I turned around and said, are you okay? And the lady was fumbling with some stuff and she said, I'm good. And so I said, buddy, are you, you gonna be okay? Are you gonna be okay? Uh, and it went clear around the rack, you know? And this one guy uh, was standing there and the other guy said, hey buddy, do you understand? If you don't have any money, he said he'll pay for what items you've got. Oh. <clears throat> and then whenever I checked out, they're all like, you know, thank you so much for offering. And I'm thinking, I know that it was God because I only had so much too. You know what I mean? But everybody probably thought that I was impotent folk. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we'd all live like that? Oh? Yes. I'm serious. I, but, but I thought, man, I, I know what it's like to stand in line and someone say that because... Very seldom do I have any, any money on me. But I'm saying, uh, it just shows you, even with all the technology and stuff, that um, it, it, there's nothing perfect. There's nothing for sure in this world. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to go into it. It said in verse 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in unto the holiest by the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> Listen, man, <clears throat> this is exciting. <clears throat> I'm going to pick two of you. Uh, I'll pick Debbie. I'm going to pick uh, Ray Lynn. I almost forgot your name. Ray Lynn. Ray Lynn and Debbie, but watch. If, if I ask you, and be truthful, okay, most people, I tell you now, if I ask them this question, they go, oh, no. Um, can you see yourself going right to the throne of God to ask God of something? Could you do it? You need to go. I could go, yeah. yeah. Okay, how about you? What's this? Okay, I'm going to correct you. That's what... Probably 90% of Christians would say, because it's a, you mean go into the holy of holies? Yeah. yeah. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. The enemy tries so hard to make us think and feel that God don't love us that much. And 
Me go to the Holy of Holies? Yeah. It says that in there. Why? Because of the blood of Christ. So, and, and so what I want you to try to understand, all prayers, everyone in here, young, hey, the kids, if, if they was to pray, God, heal my daddy. And I was standing there and I said, Lord, heal his daddy. God's going to honor all the prayers. God's not going to be like, well, I'll honor Pastor Gary's, but not Billy's prayer. Let me tell you something. It's a trick of the enemy. Kids have greater faith than what we have because they don't know of the con condemnation. Um, they're so pure in God's eyes. And kids look at God like they would want to run and sit on his lap. i got news for you. Every one of us should want to do that. You go, what? You need to grow up? No, man. I want to see my heavenly father. I want to see Jesus, but I want to see God. I want to fall down on my face before God maybe touches his feet. I don't know. But here's what I'm saying. When Jesus Christ died, the veil was torn. Graves opened up after he died, and some of them came back to life and went back into towns. As a testimony to the power that that was Christ, is Christ, and will always be the Christ. And so, I want you to know <clears throat> what we do a lot of times. We say, like, I don't want to bother God for an ear infection, or um, I'm having trouble with eyesight. Um, I, uh, but I'll be okay. That's no, learn to go. You know what, God. I need you. I got. I, I got a sty in my eye, um, Lord. Uh, I, I get this uh, a thing where you know you're fine, and all of a sudden you have to stick your leg out. It's like oh, it's pulling. It's twisted in the hip. You know, just like uh, oh, like muscle spasm. But watch, I go to God with everything, the finances, the health, uh, desires. Um, just end with my sins. God is so awesome. Let's, what's this? Let's make up uh, something, a scenario here. Let's say the wife cheated on her husband. I'm just saying, let, let's say that one time. So they sit down, they're talking, thinking, well, we'll get counseling, we'll get this and that. But both of them have the right to run right up to the throne of God. And watch, and not get down before God and go, God, this is major stuff. And then don't, don't be childish and start like, Shh. Yeah, you need to say, Lord, I think our marriage is broken. It needs fixed, and you're the only one that can fix it. Amen. Lord, you've forgiven us of all of our sins and, and continue to. It's not a one-time shot. We all pray for our sins, and, and we sin daily sometimes, and we don't even realize it. But watch. But the deal of it is, let's say that, let's say that they would go together to the altar of God. That devil is going to be furious with you and your wife. Furious. I'm talking. <laughs> Did you order anything? I'm teasing. But watch. The devil don't want that. It's the one that either kill Kill him, y'all. Huh? And, and if he done it once, all oh, you hear this all the time. It's like Satan himself entering people. Well, if he done it once, he'll do it a hundred times. Not necessarily. Maybe that once convicted him to, to, to where he felt so belittled in, in front of his wife and God. And, you know, different ones uh, in the Bible that almost fell into that. 
uh, who was it? Joseph of many callers, Potiphar's wife, tried to seduce him, and he took off running. Listen, man, he knew, first of all, he was about to sin before God, and he also liked Potiphar because Potiphar took care of him and, and acknowledged him. So that's some, that, that shows greatness in Joseph. He said to man, you know, I'm here and he trusts me with all that he has. How could I possibly, you know? See, we don't think things through and we start to allow the devil to put imaginations and imitations to work right in our own minds. But how cool would it be and how less of divorces would there really have been? If we would do what we're supposed to do for any sin, yes. and that is come clean. Listen, the best thing, I, people don't believe this. The best thing you could do is come clean. Confess it. Confess it. My God, there's people who got uh, things hidden in their closet all these years. Not me. I'm not loading the devil down with ammunition to take me out when he so desires. Nah, man, ain't nothing better than going, yep, I said that. Yeah, I did that. Oh, and then go. Right before I left the house, Melissa said, um, well, there's some girl uh, uh, was on Facebook trying to track you down. Um, uh, she wants counseling for her and her husband. And I told her, I said, listen, that's a serious thing. And I do know the girl. Ask me how well I know her. How well you know her. I've never seen her in my life. I'll tell you what's going on here. She's from the, the Euler family. And so I knew the Eulers well, the older generation of them, and they've all died off. Then I knew uh, a, a guy my age said he died, but he and his wife, divorced and she got remarried and then her husband hung himself. Uh, she pulled in from work and he's hanging under the cardboard. Anyway, but then she died. But she had a couple other daughters besides the two kids when, when we used to be close in our 20s. They had a little girl and a little boy. Well, this is two more girls that she had to an, another husband. But here's the thing. Joey and Penny never, uh, we partied together. We done everything. Uh, we was like young Bonnie and Clyde's uh, back then. I broke down a 57 doing 80 mile an hour, laying on top of a car with my fingernails, holding that little chrome strip of the windshield, praying to God, stop the car, screaming, buddy. So it started out as a fun ride, about five mile an hour coming out from Reese's. And I was supposed to get off the roof at 8.57. And he said, hold on. And the fair chance. Mm. Wow. But watch. But they never ever, after I got saved, now I would see, I'd do funerals for both of them, him and his wife. And uh, I wouldn't have the heart to turn her daughter down because of all the years that I knew the family. And uh, there was good, bad, and ugly stuff uh, in there. But I'm thinking today, when I saw it on her, I didn't get back to her yet. But I'm thinking, someone, because she would have been born after I was, you know, long out of that picture, someone has had to talk to her about uh, me being a man of God. And so there again, that backs up that we're supposed to serve, quote, everybody. Sometimes people go, oh, you better be careful counseling. Got news for you. We don't counsel anybody one-on-one. -on -one. I don't do that. And, you know, sometimes when you go to world counseling, you got to go six months, 12 months. Some people go longer than that. Our counseling sessions are usually uh, pretty much a one-time service. You, you really won't want to come back. Because I speak the truth, I don't buy sides. 
I can really be a, uh, a uh, what would you want to call it? Therapist. Huh? Therapist? No, well, yeah, Therapist but uh, you know, what I'm saying is I really would be able to weigh it out without yeah. being prejudiced yes. toward one or the other, uh, open-minded because of God in me. Yes. But I'm saying, getting back to the scripture that we read, we really can go to the Holy of Holies. We can get down, but we have a God that loves us, man. Yes. Jesus, God. Sometimes I've seen people in revivals where the Spirit of God started to move, and some of the congregation moved to the back. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they, they was afraid someone was going to go, you back here, come on up here, I'll, let me give you some words from God. And, and I'm telling you, they, uh, because they can pull it off sitting in here with us, you know. But when the, the gifts start to flow from God, you'll see some of them, and it's nothing but, mm, they got sin in the camp. You know what I mean? Something spooked them to get back by that door, or you'll see them be like, I'm like, oh my. I've seen it all over the years. Then you got Eric. He comes in here and just makes himself at home and loves us. Amen. And we love having him. Huh? No. You know why? There's nobody in here, to, uh, you know, what's he doing here? Or, or how did he get in the door? Oh, we're here for everybody. I want you to know that you've been empowered by the Holy Spirit of God to counsel. You have. A lot of you, some of the stuff you went through, it's so that in the upcoming days, God can use you to not just try to help your friend out at work or, or uh, wherever you, know, you bump it. You'll be able to go, you know what? We've been through that. My, you know, my husband and I have been through that um, that same scenario. Uh, let me tell you what worked for us. And that's that's testimony. That's not embarrassing. I've been in churches. They had 500 people, and they can't get three people to testify. You know what? I'm, I'm serious. Let, let's go. Sometimes we go too quick through the scripture, and we miss the best parts. But it says here, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. It said, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the bell. That is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from any evil conscience. And our bodies washed with what? Pure, Pure water. <laughs> Again, God made a level ground when he said not one of us is sinless. Not one. Not the Pope. Nobody was ever but Jesus himself. Not Moses. Not Noah. Huh? Not, not Enoch. Whenever he walked with God in Genesis and God just took him. He never died. God just took him on you. So pleased with him. That's the kind of walk I want with him. People would laugh at me. Listen, oh, we've seen you outside of the church. Yeah. We've seen you holler at the kids or uh, Melissa and I have a, uh, a loud con uh, conversation. Our kids are funny. Ellen, Our kids will never have to go through, you know, some of the stuff we did. Thank God. If she must have talked to him about it. <laughs> Wonder who the next guy is. <laughs> and then I, I, I think, you know what? No, that's my mind just running yeah. off the trail. Yeah. yeah. But I keep close watching that. I really go overboard on. You look nice today, baby. Mm, you smell so nice. You know? I used to tell her if something ever happened someday and you took the kids and ran off with someone else, even if they run out of state, I man, out to South Carolina or somewhere, I said, listen, I wouldn't be mad. She said, you wouldn't. 
You wouldn't be able to see the kids. I said, oh, you give me about five days. I'd be living on the same street as you. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't fight young people go like, uh, what am I going to do? They're going to take the kids and, and leave the state. What's this? That's cool. I'm bored. I ain't got nothing really keeping me back down. <laughs> I guess I'll relocate, huh? Get a job at the store where they shop at and stuff. Hi, it's Daddy. I work for Walmart. <laughs> but I'm saying, you don't quit seeing your kids. They go, what? Well, you know, I know these guys, they go, well, you know what, we're going to, uh, I'm going to have them for a month uh, while school's out. And we're working out the, uh, no, I'm going to have them a lot more than that. He wants to see, uh, I'm seeing. I had a nephew that lost, oh, he was devastated. He had two girls. His wife took the girls and left. She said, uh, I'm not going to let you see them. We don't want you nowhere around us. Uh, and if you this and this, and she threatened and stuff. He's a kid and he was crying, Uncle Gary, yeah. uh, what can I do? What can I say, give it to God. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. I said, can I tell you something? He said, what? I said, within a couple months, you're going to have complete custody of them. Uh, he said, did God tell you that? I said, no, I know your wife. I know what kind of lady she is. And it was only a few months. She called him up and said, come and get him. Keep him. I can't deal with this. And so he, he raised them into adulthood. And now they're good friends with him and with their mom still. I never understood how that works out. But, yeah. <clears throat> but it's fine. <clears throat> but I'm saying it's amazing sometimes. The dads always are sort of the ones that will fall to pieces. They'll go, I won't be able to spend time with my, I don't want somebody else kissing my kids goodnight, you know, and all. But listen, man, if he's a nice guy, maybe he'll let me stay in the basement or something. You know what I mean? I make him coffee in the morning. I try to help out around the house. You know, take less naps. Here's what I'm telling you all. No matter what happens to you, you, you know, you come here uh, a couple months ago and, and boom, went and had your leg removed and now there it is. You're still alive. She's alive. Uh, she's got more spark in her now than she had before. Jeffrey's going good. What's this? At the time, you think, oh, we're devastated. We're at the end of the road. My life's over. What am I going to do? But let it be a good wake-up call. What's this? Uh, spend more time now being active. Don't take them for granted and vice versa. Whatever you're going to do, do it now with Jeffrey, man. Enjoy yourself. Quit trying to look ahead and don't look back because there's nothing you can do about what's behind you. God wants us to realize each one of us the devil has really lied to the churches all across the lands and said, uh, you know, God, God's so holy he wouldn't be able to get in his presence. That's a lie from hell. God's got his arms wide open. And, and, and I'm telling you, God's not denying anybody that said, Lord, I messed up or Lord, I sinned. And God, what can I do? Brush yourself off and keep heading toward the cross, man. Read the next one, Ellen, real loud. Uh, verse 21. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that has promised. We're not to waver. Wavering is whenever you go, can you pray for me? I have cancer. And, uh, you know, say I say, well, let me tell you something. We know the God that's over cancer. We know God can heal cancer, take it from you. Uh, and then the person look at me and go, well, yeah, but everybody I know that's had it has died with it. And so just pray for me. Okay, well, you ready for this one? Lord, kill them. Uh, they got your mind made up. Let them die in Jesus' name. 
then the people's going to look at you and call you everything but reverend. Huh? I'm just trying to accommodate their desire. They go, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, doctor said I'm full of it. Well, you are full of something. But get right with God and empty it out. Pour your heart out to God and then stand on it. Faith is the things that you can't see. See, if we could see everything, you know, like a quick, short video, like, yeah, that was me, and, oh, yeah, I see them. The doctors are like, there's no cancer. She's been healed, glory to you. Uh -huh. It don't work that way. But it's by, my kids know by faith that tomorrow they're going to eat. They're going to eat breakfast, lunch, and supper. They've never come to me, not once yet, and said, Dad. Things are looking thin around here in the cupboards. Um, are we broke? Uh, are we out of all food? Uh, they don't do that. Now, they don't. Uh, what's this? It's by faith. What's this? Whenever the mail comes, they don't stand there going, oh my God, sha la 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 I thought, not another shut off, Bill. Oh God, Daddy, you know. No, they don't. They don't need to know how much the utility bills is. They just have to look at you. Know, you ever do that to your kids? Go, hey, hey, calm down, focus. It's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Everything's good. But I'm telling you, for kids, uh, some kids are raised in so much fear that they're scared, they're afraid to go to sleep at night. Then the parents wonder why the kids are doing bad in school. And kids they can, boy, they got good hearing and good eyesight. Anytime somebody makes a good comment to Melissa when they're out and without me, Olivia is the quickest for Kayla will come and go, yeah, there's a guy that told mom she looks really good. And I'll go, well, she does. You know, but they're waiting. Wonder if I'd go off and go, you know what? You know, keep an eye on her. I think something's up. Can I tell you something? Don't plant that kind of negativity in your children. Go ahead. Playing the Nickelback song, Next Contestant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it hard to love God? No. It's a surrendering. It's submitting. And the, frankly, frankly, I really love that about God because that way when people go, man, Gary's got his act together. I mean, he just, nothing shakes him. And he's really filled with the Spirit of God. It's not so much that I feel like that. It's just I have a God that won't lie to me. Amen. And I have a God that tells me that he will meet every need. And, and, and I'm telling you, and there's times that God would tell me no about something. And I don't go pout in the corner uh, or try to shun him the next day. Listen, I, I, I let him know, you know what, Lord, I'm not questioning. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And you're right. You know what I mean? It, he wants us. He don't want us to live above our means, but our faith ought to be above our faith right. mm -hmm. because our faith isn't in each other, it's in Christ. Mm -hmm. And there again, he wants all the glory for everything that happens. And timing, I don't know about you, but timing is everything. For doctors, if a doctor is going to do surgery on you, don't plan it out. It might be a month, two months before you get to see. You're thinking, well, they said it was getting bad. You think they'd want to do it tomorrow. They're getting all their, their ducks in order and uh, procedures and stuff, making sure. Well, with God, I don't know why. We can't trust him uh, like we should because we say, well, you know, you don't understand how bad this looks. And I know God could. Well, when you start wavering in your faith, it's like telling God, you know what? Um, you, Casper, the friendly ghost and Santa Claus, all got all three in common. God's not Santa Claus. He's not Casper, the friendly ghost. 
And so God reads our mind and the intent of our heart. But I'm telling you, he, we should all be like Moses, really, when he parted the sea with the staff. He didn't do that. God permitted that. That's the way God chose so the people would follow Moses. He wants people to follow us. He would really love to do some great miracle signs and wonders with us just so your friends could see it. Just so your friends would go, you know what? Amen. My God, man, you said that was going to come to pass. Amen. You know, we just, I don't know why we can't put our faith and trust in God with everything. Everything. Melissa, next month, we, we got to go to see about that thing up in here. Man, I could stand here all day long and tell you, like, I don't even think about it. God's got it. Well, God does have it. And God had it the last time. But she had to have it cut out, and it was terrible. Wait one minute. Then the doctors got me because she was in like five hours or so. And don't you know the first time I finally told the woman in the waiting area, I said, listen, I got to go downstairs and get like a candy bar or something, coffee, and my phone's about dead. And they had charge boxes in the, it's cool. I go down and do that, what did they do? My name spoken over the intercom. The pick up, I pick up. And this woman said, the doctors came out to talk to you and we can't find you. Can you get up here right away? Click. I'm like, oh, the doctors come out right away. What do you think my mind sort of going? What's going wrong with her? I run. I didn't take the elevator. I ran all the way back up. Ran in the room. I'm huffing and puffing. And the people there put it all together because everyone's like, the two doctors went right back there. There's a, a little room. And they're waiting on you back there. Are you McFadden? I said, yeah. No one was smiling or nothing. I'm like, Oh my God, you know, all up the door and they even said, where have you been, you know? I said, I was down in the lobby. I said, what's the matter? And they said, sit down. I said, what, what happened? And they said, well, as of now, they said she's uh, in recovery and uh, everything should be fine. Wow, wow. <laughs> You'd have thought I was disappointed that she was living. I'm like, you don't have no idea how bad I am right now with moving, let alone running. And that minivan, I slept in, in, in uh, the minivan in every seat just for about four hours. I tried the front seat, that wasn't getting it. Then I got back in the, the second seat and laid it down and I couldn't, I ended up getting that back seat Laying this way with my feet, I looked like I was giving birth to Eric. <laughs> it's, it's like the story of the three little bears and that little girl breaks into their house and passes all the beds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Can I tell you something though? And this is the lying to you. You know how I many people uh, they go in with that saying, oh no, I know God. God wouldn't let this happen. I hate to bust your bubble. But there are signs that they really do die. There's times that your prayer don't get answered the way that you thought. 
We keep praying right now when we go down, yeah. we're hoping that it's smaller instead of bigger. And we know, I've known people that had things like that that did so shrink and disappear. I've had people that had x-rays of things and, and got free x ray and it was not there. Even when something like that happens, so we at that period of time, we just, everything we've learned about God, everything that we believed in, and all the faith and walk and talk and, uh, you'll, feel, you'll feel so empty inside that you'll want to die. And people go, well, you know, what happened? Well, life, five babies, you know, I'm talking babies that was born, brought into the world. That family I told you about, six, six or seven day old baby, I had to stand and hold the baby up in front of the doctors and the grandma and grandpaps and everybody. As they all said, we know that you're a man of God and God will give us our baby back. brought him back down he was still dead the doctor told me after the family left he said I really have never felt the Spirit of God like that is what I've seen take place he said I really thought that that baby was gonna be alive he said something inside of me he said I've never felt the presence of God like that other ones spoke up and said it too but God, I, you know, when I look, I'm like, the mom sitting here drying her eyes. In my mind, I'm like, God, what happened? And God said, no, everything's okay. Well done. Now, hand the baby, Abram, back to the mommy. I'm like, God, it's not well. It's not good. But watch. I looked at her and said, Stephanie, God said that he has Abram with him and that you'll see him again someday. But it just wasn't in the plans. He was sent here and you you and your husband was chosen to carry him for, for the nine months and then for that week. And I said, I bet you, you took a lot of pictures. Everyone quit crying. They started laughing. And she said, oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Just, uh, and, and I'm standing there. I'm wanting to throw up. I got a knot in my stomach. That I, you know, I'm like, and uh, God said, just keep talking, <clears throat> loving on them. <clears throat> and she just kept, like, holding them and moving them a little bit. The daddy kept wiping the baby's head. But everybody just calmed right down. And after about 20, 30 minutes, no one's saying nothing. It gets calm, calm. I said, Steph, I said, it's going to be all right. I know this sounds pathetic, but it's going to be all right. I said, and it's time. I said, will you give me Abram back? And I need for you and all to collect your thoughts. And you've got some arrangements to make. And so, how about if you just go ahead and go ahead and leave, and I'm going to stay behind a little bit. I, I want to talk to the doctor. The doctor said, I thought, how are we going to get that baby back off the mother? He said, I've never seen anybody do what you're doing. I said, buddy, it's not me. I'm a nobody. You have to believe me. But watch. She gave him back. When they left, he put the baby in a gym bag. The zipper did shut and another guy grabbed that bag and down the hall it went. The whole way back home that morning, I really thought I was going to literally throw up. And it was a Sunday morning of all times. And God said, no, you're going to preach. Get, compose yourself. God said, it's okay, he's with me. 
That's not what I wanted. That's not what the mother and dad wanted. Done that, that service that Dean Whitmore, Dean Whitmore, and I always pray. Dean's a really old fire Christian man. We always pray before we uh, start the service and for souls to be saved and good things, you know. And Dean said, Brother Gary, it's going to be a rough one today. He said, I don't know what we're going to do. And I said, Brother Dean, you got to trust me. Trust the God that's in me. And I said, you know that I'm led by God. I said, God said it's going to go smooth today. He said, Gary, I wish I could believe that. He said, I'm so afraid they're going to pull him out of the casket. And he had had, you know, the autopsy and stuff. And I said, well, here's what I'll tell you, buddy. She's not going to pull him out of the casket, but you got to trust me on this. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to take the baby out of the casket and let her hold him. He said, oh, Gary, you sure that God's telling you to do that? I promise. It was the sweetest service out of 800 and some that I've done. As soon as I picked him up and turned around, her and her husband stopped crying. The older people, their family members stopped crying. Everybody was, and then some of them were like, what's he doing? What's he doing? And they're watching you. And I said, Stephanie, why well, share a little bit about Jesus? Would you want to hold him one last time? Oh my, I can do that. And Dean's standing in the hallway. Dean said, I couldn't move. He said, I could feel the Spirit of God. And she didn't try to pull the hat off. It just, and, and so we don't see what God sees. We assume, oh, it's going to be horrible. They'll be passing out, fainting, uh, uh, mad, angry, you know. It's amazing when we trust God. That's how I said, nobody really knows. Every time you step up to speak, you have no idea how responsible whoever that person is. God better be leading and guiding them. They better be hearing from him and not from some higher up preacher that wrote some notes for them. You can't write this stuff down. I don't write stuff down. It was, you know what? She said she'd never ever have another child. Her husband left her shortly after that, that when they lost her, their son. She ended up marrying a younger guy and had a girl. A baby girl. Do they still miss Abram? Yeah, I do. <laughs> 24 says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto what? Love. Love and good works. Here's what happens with church people, man. They'll provoke someone else in here or one another to anger. You know, there's always some childish, I don't like this one, and that one don't like me, and that's fine with me, and, or uh, I'm like, oh my God, you come together, you know, mainly one, some of you is here for all three. I don't see how you could know each other well enough to form an opinion, well, I like her, but I don't like him, uh, and blah, blah, blah. Listen to me. You're focused on the wrong thing. Then. We're supposed to be focused on the Lord, on getting our walk better, getting our walk down the path. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I got news for you. I've seen people uh, at the funeral homes that said, I, you know, I went through and didn't know what to say to the family. I'm like, talk to them. Visit people, you know what I mean? 
somebody will be in the hospital and then they'll get a miracle and come home and then nobody goes around to see them until they're back laid up again. I don't understand why they do it. Read the next one here, 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. So he does so want us sort to come out and assemble for the preaching. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we willfully sin, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice, but a certain fearful looking for judgment, a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses. Uh, Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified as unholy things and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. So are we to try to get even with the enemy? No. Turn it over to God, man. Anyone that's done you wrong, there will come a day where God will deal with that person. But we, we're not to do it. All we will end up doing is getting you in trouble with the law or, or you spending your time behind bars. Trust God that he, people say all the time, why, why does the corrupt, the hateful, the uh, mean people get away with stuff? They don't get away with nothing. Pardon? No. Go down to 31. It is fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Call to remembrance the former days in which after you illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction, partly while ye were made a, a gazing stock, both by reproaches of afflictions, and partly while you became companions of them that were so used. For he had compassion of me in my bonds, he took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, he might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure. So even when it's hard things that we're up against, when we go through things, if we draw back away, woe unto us. I'm saying you. When I say he's our father and he is holy and righteous, you can't imagine how many people pray to him around the clock, day, week, month, years. People that seek him, but a lot of times they don't seek him for the right reasons. They only know him whenever it gets real bad. It's hard, I'll, I'll admit, it's hard to keep the faith, but you have to. But we're not of them, 39, who draw back unto prediction, but of them that believe to the saving of the souls. I'm going to read a few of these to try to help boost your faith. But it said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence <coughs> excuse me, of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. In other words, people that spent a lot of time with God, longer than someone knew in the Lord, <clears throat> they have a good report. 
<clears throat> because <clears throat> no matter what the outcome was of what they prayed for, whether they got their prayers answered the way they thought it should have been, or whether God done the total opposite, they still love God enough to stand and go, you know what, I don't understand uh, why he allowed that. But I know that he knows more than me. And I just got to take him that everything's going to be all right. And you do, I'm telling you. Through faith, we understand the world were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. <clears throat> by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, being dead, that he spoke. Remember whenever God told Cain, Abel told me you killed him. His blood spoke from the ground. You can't pull nothing over God's eyes. No one's getting away with nothing. Nothing. By faith in five, look at this. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him for before his translation he had this testimony <clears throat> that he what? He pleased God. God. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I know people that really are searching, seeking, searching, seeking God uh, with all their heart, totally sold out to God. And then all of a sudden, people go, <clears throat> they, they disappeared. I don't know if someone uh, killed them out along the interstate. <clears throat> they never found the body. They never this, this. Now what? You'll be the first to call me crazy. <clears throat> How do you know if God took Enoch up and if God took Elijah up? How do you know God? Can't take up a child, an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a watch. Oh, uh, a 30-year-old, a 70-year-old, a 90-year-old. How do you know what he does? Listen, because he only told us of them two going up without dying, we go, <clears throat> that's hard to believe. Uh, uh, God, God, God can't do that or couldn't do that or wouldn't do that. I don't know. Enoch was just a man. He pleased pleasing to God. Wow, we don't ever, ever try to look at God in our relationship and ask God boldly, hey Lord, how do you feel about me? Am I pleasing to you? You can talk to him like that. You can. He'll tell you too. Huh? He'll tell you too. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He he will let you know if it was if it's not verbal, you'll get a sign. I'm talking. You'll know that the presence of God done stopped on you. You know what I mean? Like he he can do so many things. I asked God a question, and I would never lie about this. This is after my dad had been gone a while passed away in the Lord. I, I was crying at work. I was well. All day I couldn't quit crying. It, it was one of them days I missed my daddy. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. Different guys come by my work area and said, Gary, you gonna be all right? I said, yeah. I said, you know, it's just, you wouldn't understand. And so I cried all day to myself and, and kept saying, Lord, I, I just, I know that the Bible says I'll see him again someday and stuff, but because I wouldn't get saved while he was alive, I said, Lord, is there any way that you could let my daddy know? Not only did I get saved, but that, uh, that I'm, I'm going to preach. And instead of God just telling me, oh, he knows, or I've told him, you know, here's what God does. And he's not messing with our heart. God said there's a revival down in uh, behind the Laurel Mall, Mount Braddock. 
Code Run Church. And I said, well, yeah, I know where that church is. Guys at Bowman go there, pre Methodist uh, church. God said, when you get off work, I want you to go down there tonight. And I said, Lord, they don't have church on Friday night. Here's the flesh. God said, no, tonight they will. I'm like, so later I asked a couple of the guys, I said, hey, is your church, Code Run Church, open down there tonight, a Friday night? They said, yeah, we're kicking off this revival. We'll be there for like a week. I'm like, I'm thinking, my God, you know, God, there is, there, there's a revival. And, and God said, you need to go to it. I'm like, well, Lord, I go to church a lot now. Oh, why? God said, just go. But keep in mind all day, Lord, does my dad know? Is there any way he would know I got saved and that I'm being called to preach? Well, when I went home that day, I was married to my ex at that time, and I said, we're, we're supposed to go to Cove Run tonight. There's a revival. And I said, God said that it's important that I be there. She said, well, that's good that you said that. She said, because I'm not going. God didn't tell me to go to Cove Run. And I said, okay, all I know is I'm going. I know what I heard. And so I go down. That place was packed, packed. When I come in the back door, every row, it was a big sanctuary there. It was just jammed. And a lady with about three kids was uh, squeezed in a pew. And she actually saw me stand there and she said, come here, sit here by me. And I'm like, there's just not a, and she said, everybody squeeze up. Got another one that needs a seat. And so I, I sat down next to her and I'm like, oh well, <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> a gospel group come out on the platform, man, and they was good. Back on track was the name of their group. And they was real close young guys in the Lord. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden my flesh flared up. I'm like, what am I doing here? It's Friday night. I'm squeezed in. Lord, what'd you bring me here for? And God said, what have you prayed? I said, I prayed and asked you how many times does my dad know that I'm, I'm saved and I'm on fire for you, Lord, and I'm going to preach. And God said, the singer got up, announced the song they were going to open up with. And he went to open the song up, and I'm telling you, if you'd have seen his face, he stopped, he started to get big tears, and he turned around, and you couldn't hear everything. But but he, he told him, he said, the Lord just spoke to me and said, we're not there. There's someone, he said, there's someone in this audience tonight that God said all day you've been, like, asking a question, something going on, and God told you to come here tonight. And this is for you, and you'll know why it is. I felt the Spirit of God come on me, but still, like, and he broke out singing a song called Supper Time. Come home, come home, it's supper time. And you'd have to hear the song. It's an old gospel tune. And my dad played it a lot up until he died. He kept saying how ready he was to go home to be with the Lord. When he started to sing that song, man, I felt like I was seven years old. I started bawling. I put my head down in my hands, and I'm just bawling and sobbing. And when I finally got done and they quit singing, and I looked up, there were so many people in there, man, sort of testifying about, can you feel that? Can you feel that? Rows of people saying that they could feel the Spirit of God. And I'm, tell, I'm sitting back there, I swear that it looked like that boy zoomed in, like in, into my face. You know what I mean? And he said, I, I hope that the one that came, I, I hope that answered your question. I'm like, God, that was Dad's favorite song. And God said, I know. I'm like, see, other people would be like, well, that still don't tell you anything. 
that spoke to me. God has a way to speak to us sometimes, and it's not always just blunt and forward, but he's got his way about it. That's, I just, I can't, I can give testimony, I can read scriptures, and I can try to encourage you and try to woe you over for Christ. I, I feel sometimes like, how can I know what I know? And so many others not know what I know or not feel what I feel. And I still feel like, man, I you know, I'm just like the rest of you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I'm thinking, well, it was easy for me by confessing all my sin to feel the heart of God and to have God. I've had good Christians that said, nah, that's not scriptural. Listen to this. <clears throat> I've had people that said, You've heard the voice of God. And I said, yeah. And they said, well, yeah. There's other people who have testified that they've heard. They said, but once in a while you'll tell us that Jesus told you this and this. And I said, yeah. They said, you mean God. I said, no. The Son of God, Jesus, his voice is different than God the Father. And they're like, uh, uh, we're not buying into that. Here's all I can tell you. There's no comparison. When I say, when, but watch, but you'll know that you've been spoke to by the heavens. I'm saying, but his, God's voice is different than Jesus Christ's voice. That ain't a bad thing. Jesus died for us. And he does so have say so in stuff. But I'm saying, I think it's awesome. But I've had good uh, certified knowledgeable men that went to Bible college and all that. And they'll go, well, no, you mean God just kind of lets you know in your heart? No, dude, I, I'm talking heard him. And then, then because they haven't had that experience, they'll shun you. They'll go, who does he think he is? Hey, he's a good God. Sometimes when he spoke, it wasn't to praise me. It was to correct me. I've had God ask me, how dare you? When I questioned him about not healing everybody in the Philippines. And God said, have you not seen miracles? Signs the one. Have you not seen hundreds of Muslims turn to me? Yes, Lord. He said, Then you question on who I healed or who I didn't heal. And I said, I really do apologize, Lord. Please forgive me. Keep using me, Lord. I'm learning. You know, this is new. And then God would be like, Okay. Um, that, that's how I said, don't let people tell you, you got to start all back from day one with God. That's not how it works. I still can remember praying to him as a little kid, that, uh, that little prayer that my mom and dad used to have us pray every night, even though we didn't go to church and stuff. But you would pray, now I lay me down to sleep. I bless the Lord my soul to keep. You know, if I should die before I wake I bless the Lord my soul to take. And then we'd still throw out some names of people in the family. And I used to always find that fascinating. But God said there's homes that he's in right now. And he's only in there because someone has to invite him. And God said the dad didn't. He hates me. The mother don't believe in me. But the kids, whether it was by Bible camp or a visit with their friend to a church, uh, they literally did go home in their house and start and pray to Jesus, you know, Jesus, thank you. And, and uh, so, yeah, he's no respecter of persons. Now, I'll tell you again, God can use a child to work get denying gifts through just as easy as he could us. And sometimes it's even easier because of a child's faith. 
So, but the other stories that's in here about faith, read them. Well, you get a chance this week. You know, I know a lot of you will uh, look in the paper for the daily prayer, or you'll have a book that will tell you on certain dates, you know, scripture. But I'm saying go home and read that chapter about what all he's done for people with faith. And, and then, like I said, uh, Abram was going to slay his son Isaac. And that's whenever an angel yelled and told him. And Abraham would have killed him. Abraham would have killed Isaac, but not because he didn't love Isaac. He loved God so much he was trusting God. He didn't understand. But he put him on that wood. He bound him up and was ready to sacrifice his son. And God provided a ram and a bush. God just wants to see the intent of our heart. Don't try to play God. You're not smart enough. He wants to do more for each and every one of you. But we, we, we have to testify. I, I'm an earthly dad. What's this? The kids know how to work me. No, they do. Say they say. Don't say, will you take us to five and below? No, what? Yeah, I'll take you. When? But when, Dad? How soon, Dad? Let me go get dressed. And then they all three wanted to go today. And uh, yesterday. so we went there and then we went to another store. That was yesterday morning. Pardon? That was yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? Oh yeah, today. Oh. Yeah, today. Oh, I don't was I went over to Tim's. But I'm saying watch. They're they're so nice about it. And, oh, you know, Dad, you know. Dad never lies to me. And you're so good. And uh one of them said, well, we ought to, can we get something to eat? That's what it was. What's this? So I gave them a, I gave them a choice, and they picked Taco Bell. So, you know, went down there and ate. But I'm saying, it's things that we do, right? Now watch. Well, with God, he's, he wants us. In other words, you're not going to believe this. God wants us to say, God, take me to five and below. Give me five dollars. <laughs> you know, no, but. Take me to Bermuda. <laughs> but he does. I'm saying, if we would just tell him and woo him, Lord, I thank you for my car. I thank you for my kid. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you do for us. And, and, you know, it's not a coincidence. You know, and uh, you might be surprised the next time you ask God for something. But you got to testify. You got to tell people, "Hey, man, if I keep getting blessed with stuff and I don't ever mention it to anybody, I'm not glorifying the person that gave me it." But you need to testify. You know what I mean? It will give other people uh, encouragement and hope. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up on God. And uh, I'll tell you this again. Like I said, we put too much trust in the world and in worldly counselors. Uh, we had Brody that we took to a guy. Uh, and here's what he said. He said, well, you just have a, a seat in there. I'm going to take him in over here. Just Brody. And I'd get ticked off. She'd get ticked off. And the one up in Morgantown that told me, he said, you're not even his dad. He said, Shh. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, I'm with him. I know what meds he's on too. And, and I don't believe that he's going, he said, he'll be on this pill the rest of his life. I said, I don't believe that. You don't know him. You see him every six months or something. I said, he don't need that. He's got a lot of energy, but. There's some days that he's just as normal as anybody. Uh, I don't, I just, and so he really would get like, try to get you to leave the room or I'd answer him and he'd look straight at her and go, like I said, has Brody this or that. I told him literally something along, I can't think the exact phrase, 
I told him, I said, I think that you're like a, a kook. I don't believe in what you're doing. Do you have kids? You know what I mean? Didn't I? I said, how, how do you counsel children and know so much about them? You don't have one? That's weird. I had a counselor at 1230 at night that pulled in out at Hither's Delight out there going to Smithfield. Come out there for a 14 or 15 year old boy that was being rebellious with his dad and me. And the boy was telling his dad off and said, uh, I, I can come and go as I please. The dad was getting ready to go in for major surgery and had asked, he said, is there some way you could take care of my son while I'm in there and if I don't make it, will you finish raising him? That's tough when people do that. And I told him, yeah. And if I tell you I'm gonna do something, then I'm gonna do it. But I'm saying, the next thing we know, he jumped up and said, uh, uh, I, I, he said, I'm going out front to uh, the ice cream place. He said, my counselor is here. He said, you might, do you, how would you like to meet my counselor? And I said, I'll tell you what, I'd love to meet him. I want to see what kind of a man comes out this late at night, doesn't come to the door to see your daddy about talking to you and tells you sneak off and come out to the highway. I said, you tell him, I definitely want to meet him. So he leaves and he goes up. I told Perry, I said, hey, I'll be back. So I want to be on the car when the this dude, I'm not saying a ponytail makes you weird. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But he had this big, thick ponytail down to here. I beat on the window and he said, I don't have nothing. To, I said, put your window down. Put it down. Um, and I told him, I said, there's someone tell you, you're done. I'm Pat. He said, are you his dad? I said, no, I'm Pastor Gary. I said, let me tell you something. You know how nasty this looks this late at night, you sitting with this young boy in a car? That's how that stuff gets started. I said, so you want to finish talking with him? You come back down to the house, meet his dad, and I'll be right there in case you need anything. And so he did so, finally come down. Uh, he didn't stay but a couple minutes. And uh, I told him what I thought of him nicely. But uh, these are life experiences. He's another one, like I said, he didn't have a wife, he didn't have a girlfriend, he didn't have a kid. He has counseled young men. It's like, woo, 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 there's you. But there's signs. There's things that you ought to, God gave us, listen, a big bucket of common sense. Just things that you would know without being educated in different fields. It's common sense, man. Learn to trust him. Talk to him like you talk to, to your friends and, and your loved ones. You can tell him anything and everything. God is the only one that's never repeated something that I've said. Amen. <laughs> never repeated one thing that I've said. Hey, you're blessed tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I hope you got something out of tonight's service. Are we still alive up there? George, hope you're doing good out on the highway. He said uh, he's Alyssa in. Alyssa said I missed uh, three calls from. Well, it's Nevada. Huh? He's in Nevada. Okay. Try calling you back on her phone. My phone's in distress. Call me back at all phone My phone's phone. actually phone. going to be buried in the backyard here probably in a couple more days. Oh, no, it's falling apart. Right the back's coming off of it again. And, you uh, know, I just hate them. I hate phones. But you'll be able to contact me through. Melissa's phone. Okay. I hope you're having a good time. House is foothilling. It's not. So, when's he going to the emergency room? 
George, when are you going to go have it looked at? When he gets back home. Huh? When he gets home. Get back home? Okay, well, maybe we'll find you a potty chair and a wheelchair. Uh, why would you put anything like that off? I'm telling you, there ain't nothing to mess with in an infection. So, okay. Oh, uh, you ready to be prayed over? Yeah. Okay, what do you need? My back has been hurting me for days. Can we turn that off? Yeah.